Twitter, uh, start discussing with people, uh, I sort of noticed that there hadn't been much activity on the vaccines channel. Um, and I also noticed that uh, the summary page um, is completely empty at the moment for, for vaccines. Um, and so it seems like even the sort of the, the quickest, lowest hanging of fruit uh, could be gotten perhaps quite fast and put onto the summary channel, maybe in parallel to some of these more complicated uh, machine learning type um, approaches. Because it seems to me that some of the best successes that have been had on the summary channel have been with fairly simple, like regular expression matching type algorithms. So my plan was to try and uh, jump into that and uh, in hopefully a way that's kind of coordinated with other people who are thinking about this problem. Um, and I was particularly uh, impressed, I guess, by um, Alekase's um, document that suggested some very constructive ways to go about that. Uh, and I wanted to sort of get together and talk about um, how, how to realize some of those ideas. So, um, uh, Alexei, you're you on the call. I think you are, right? Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello, Ben. Hello, all. So, I wonder, do, do you want to maybe just talk us through quickly your um, your document here, so we can use that as the basis for discussion? Yes, yes. Let's let's go. So, uh, Do, do you want me to to read the task or, or, or what? Uh, to what, sorry? Do you want me to read the tasks or, or what? Uh, no, I don't think necessarily read the tasks, but um, uh, for example, uh, I see you have task description, input and output. So input is, is things that we need to define, right? Like uh, lists of antigens. So we need to um, find what the what the, essentially the search terms are, right? That we're going to be uh, using uh, to search through the data. Yes, yes. Right? Uh, first task, of, of course, is to find uh, input, what uh, definitely it means uh, antigens, for example, or virus mechanism. What does it mean in terms of uh, numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Is a sequence of characters or it's some numbers or something else. Yes, uh, then uh, we should understand what uh, additional data, data we could uh, use for, for these tasks. For example, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, proteins and genes uh, databases such as uh, BLAST, for example. But uh, for now, uh, I don't understand how exactly we could use this uh, data. So this is the uh, second point, right? And the right. third, and the third button, uh, third uh, point is uh, to collect papers, to collect uh, ideas, solutions, existing solutions for, for, for these tasks. Yes, uh, indeed. So, uh, and, then, and then we can uh, discuss these ideas, discuss this uh, data and uh, figure out some plan. And I will have uh, the meeting with the researchers on Monday, I hope and I will be able to discuss uh, with them this plan, discuss ideas and uh, make some sort of evaluation. So do, do you imagine that the researchers that you will meet with will be able to provide um, the necessary inputs for these five yeah, examples? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, so, so uh, that's, we should assume that that is um, progressing okay and we'll continue on Monday and uh, if we want to take an active um, role in, in starting the thing to do is to add more tasks along these lines and then find the resources where we can um, get the, the inputs for them rather than trying uh, in parallel with you to, to find the inputs for these ones. Does that sound right? I have a quick question and uh, question to Alex uh, primarily. 
do you think there will be uh, there would be a value for us to uh, kind of build the just the the filter for papers that are relevant to uh, you know antigen research and you know all of these like specific things like epitope I'm, I'm not, not even sure like what that is but just something that filters out from the 30,000 papers and you know presents a thousand of those you mean uh, from uh, court yes right? uh, I think we should search uh, more uh, in more how it could be um, in more white, in, in more white uh, databases. Absolutely, I think uh, you know we are limited be, by be, the be, current. Because uh, this is, uh, <laughs> I apologize for my English. I have no speaking practice for a long time. No problem. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, highly unlikely that uh, we uh, could uh, find relevant uh, papers in uh, data we have for, for coronavirus. And can you, and maybe, and similar to how other tests are currently explored, I'm thinking about it in terms of general kind of viral disease approaches and knowledge that exists in that data set. Obviously there is not enough research specific to coronavirus right now, but maybe, you know, presenting those thousand uh, papers uh, to those researchers and just filtering those out by relevant things could help them make a more educated decision on how to help us define inputs and what to look for. Don't you think so? Maybe, maybe. Okay. Uh, if I may chime in as well, this is Dan Sosa talking. Um, so the way that you phrase the task here, it sounds kind of to me like this is a structure prediction task. And I'm wondering if we're concerned that we might be going outside the scope of the CORD-19 challenge. Um, I'm aware of some research that's been done in this kind of like antigen structure prediction stuff, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that literature wouldn't be found in the coronavirus data set because it's applied generally to um, antigen presentation and epitope, that kind of mapping in like immunology broadly. Yeah, and I think that's a concern that a lot of us are having right yes, now. Yes, I, I, I have uh, several uh, papers, but uh, they about uh, yellow fever vaccine. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh, they presented uh, approach based based on machine learning for uh, immune, immune against prediction. Uh, bias based on uh, epitope and I found today a paper about uh, malaria. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So uh, to refer to your concern Dan, I think, um, yeah. I would say that we're currently in this exploratory stage, brainstorming stage of the task and it else also would be helpful for us to think about the task in two stages, kind of the small impact which addresses the current scope of the Kaggle challenge and is basically focused on retrieving relevant bits of information from CORD-19 and large impact, thinking beyond Kaggle competition and thinking about the actual you know, predictive models and uh, actual things beyond NLP extraction. Um, basically for uh, risk factors task, I've outlined these just to give you guys an example. Uh, small impact, retrieving relevant bits of information that could help researchers scan through database, retrieving relevant relationships between risk factors and existing research, retrieving the list of co-occurring diseases and complication, uh, retrieving relevant measures, recommendations for each of the stages of disease. So basically just NLP uh, extraction from the current CORD-19 data set. In terms of large impact, um, I listed out being able to identify core relationships between each of the stages of disease and make main risk factors. Uh, then being able to predict probability of results for each uh, stage of disease, identifying main groups of risk, identifying underlying causes of co-occurrence co of diseases and complications, and producing models to invent new forms of measures, recommendations for each stage of disease. So basically grant 
uh, impact things that are obviously not possible as of right now, but we can at least, uh, you know, separate what we can do now and kind of uh, put grand uh, tasks, um, you know, as, as a future goal. And I think a lot of things that Alex uh, listed out sound like large impact things. And it will be a great uh, idea for someone to list out small impact things that kind of are the pieces of the puzzle for the big tasks. And just, you know, filtering out the current data set that talks about epitomes and adaptogenes and all of these who knows what keywords. Totally. And I agree that I think presenting the relevant literature that might have been published so far about epitopes and antigen presentation, that's going to be, uh, that's useful. And that's totally like, we can do that with NLP right away. I just, yeah, the, the kind of big picture of like, actually doing the structural modeling, I think that's a big can of worms. So just to have that in that kind of perspective. Yeah, maybe someone from this call can actually list out all of these keywords. And maybe you, Alex, can help us create a vector of, you know, 20 keywords. Uh, that kind of are synonyms of epitomes, adaptogenes, yeah, 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 and something. If you can do that, I'm pretty sure we can get some of the NLP guys uh, actually fulfill the request and produce uh, results like today. Uh, okay, it would be great. And second, second uh, task, small task. Uh, frankly, Brandon. <laughs> uh, Brandon uh, has uh, already done. Uh, his uh, NERF results based on BioNERF is very useful in terms of uh, antigen screening because uh, I guess uh, proteins uh, means uh, antigens in uh, many cases, in many papers that are relevant to vaccine development. So are you saying that the, the actual metadata pre-processing that Brandon executed is already useful and we can present it on the Kaggle summary page in some way? Uh, yes, I, uh, I speaking about um, we can uh, make some uh, small uh, process uh, on this uh, data and it will be very useful. We can calculate most uh, uh, popular proteins in a subset related to uh, vaccine development. And it uh, will be very, 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 very useful. Okay, can you try and describe how that would look like? Just as two, three sentences uh, later in Slack. Uh, I also speak Russian, so you can uh, send me the text uh, to translate if you need help. Uh, that sounds like an actionable thing that we can, um, you know, get done today and, you know, publish on the Kaggle summary thing tomorrow. Yeah. And, and, uh, and talking about uh, NLP and small, relatively small, small tasks. <clears throat> Uh, there is a challenge to extract uh, numerical data from the papers. Uh, for vaccine development, it is uh, very important to have uh, uh, data about uh, immune density. And this is a numbers. Uh, I do not know any good working solutions for extraction uh, for extracting uh, numerical data. What well, what would be the um, figures of merit you would be looking for? What what sorry? Uh, well, the, the 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 data, the numbers. I mean, what variables in particular? Because the one case I've seen where the number extraction has been pretty successful was the um, R coefficient. Um, I forget yeah. what that thing's called, but uh, that's quite sort of easy to name and find and then extract the, the number. But in this case, what is the name of the variable that we would find in the papers that we would want to extract? Immunogenicity. Sorry, say again? I, I, I will send in, uh, in chat. 
for example, I think like study size would be just hopefully straightforward to parse out of the paper and very useful, I think. Okay, well, may maybe we should make a list of these terms and uh, then we can start getting to work on trying to extract them from a few sample papers. Okay, okay. Okay, I mean, do you guys have any other ideas? It sounds like we've reached pretty good actionable goals that are uh, unfortunately dependent on uh, Alex to describe and formalize. But after that, I'm sure Dan and, and Ben can chime in and try to push this forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I was just gonna say, I also wanted to mention that um, uh, Abby is dropping on and off the call here, but we've been making contact with um, some, what you guys would call domain experts, I guess, professors of virology um, at UTA who have Maybe, maybe more specific questions that they'd like answered, you know, about specific techniques that they're exploring to, um, uh, to in the context of vaccine development, um, which as we learn more about, we'll formalize into tasks. But I, I do have a feeling that this particular task, the vaccines and therapies one, could be one that is sort of more scientific and more specific and less general than some of the other tasks. We may want to dig into specific queries from specific researchers. I think that's an awesome resource that you have. I think that's going to be super invaluable. Um, yeah, I was going to just chime in as well about, I, I'm interested in starting to tackle the other half of the, the challenge, which is like the therapeutic angle. So thinking about which drugs that people started to think about as treatment options for COVID. Um, what do we actually know about those treatments? What kind of evidence exists there to support these treatments being proposed, um, which ones have like shown the best effect so far, which and animal models effect. have been considered. Yeah, exactly. So I, I bullet pointed some of these ideas in my comment on the Task BT channel, but I want to start exploring that angle as well, kind of the non-vaccine side of things. That's great. And I think there's a lot to be done there. And I think there's a lot that can be like, once the problem is well formalized, and I think that as these bullets are here that I posted. I think it's pretty close to being like uh, nailed down. I think it's easy to kind of delegate certain tasks uh, to people who are less of domain experts in pharmacology or biology or just who want to get involved in an NLP capacity. For example, one, one thing that I can think of is I want to know which papers are talking about uh, that validate their prediction of which drugs could be used versus which ones are just making predictions in a computational way based on, let's say, structural prediction kind of models. And that could be formalized as a machine learning, just a classification task, and you could just label papers with that annotation at the paper level. So, so tasks like that can be teased out of these sorts of prompts, I think, pretty naturally. Yeah, that's great. So for the for the task like that, um, I'm I'm actually interested uh, in in how that's constructed in this case. So um, you would uh, have to define the subset by hand to train on. Like you know, here's sort of like 20 papers in one category and 20 papers in another category, and now look through all the other papers in the archive and match to one of these two categories. Is that how you would do it? Exactly. Yeah. One way could be just like labeling papers, and you could start already with some heuristics like certain journals, which in the actual learning in the actual algorithm, you wouldn't want to use that metadata, but to quickly get some potential papers that are like, oh, this definitely has some good experimental results. Maybe you want to check the papers published in Nature, Cell Science, et cetera, versus more computational papers will be published in other journals like bioinformatics. Um, so that's, that's a heuristic that the annotator could use, but at some level, I think we're going to have to do some labeling of uh, these papers into experimental, non-experimental, et cetera, for the different annotation classes that we're thinking of. Okay, yeah. I mean, certainly we should make that a priority because once we've done that, we can enable other people to do work, I guess. I mean, Absolutely. I think that's, in. yeah, that's, that's along the critical path. I agree. 
All right, guys. So are there, are there some of those, let me ask, are there some of those labeling tasks that people without uh, a strong background in uh, pharmacology or virology could, could do? I mean, uh, if you have a scientific background, you can tell the difference between a theory paper and an experiment paper, at least. Um, can, can we define some of those labeling tasks that some non-experts can do? We can, yeah. And I think uh, I can go back to my bullet point list and kind of start to tease apart those tasks a little bit more. I can make a proof of concept about what I want the, the summary table to look like because ultimately with these different tasks I've defined here, I think that could just lend itself very nicely to another summary table um, as has been posted for other, other tasks. But yeah, I definitely think that, for example, of the task of like experimental versus computational papers, I think that uh, maybe like a list of, of things that the annotators can look out for as kind of like rough heuristics or pretty good heuristics, that can be outlined very well um then those can be sort of like quote unquote noisy labels and then someone with more domain expertise can just double check those labels again I'm, I'm happy to discern whether or not a paper is computational or if it actually has kind of like uh clinical you know uh randomized control trials and all that but i think a lot of that is, is relatively straightforward to describe without deep technical knowledge excellent all right, sounds good, guys. Sounds like plenty of stuff. I'll be posting recording for everyone to, that will be joining the task, um, and hopefully we'll make some progress today. Uh, Alex, let me know if you need any help with uh, the language barrier. Happy to help. Just another quick question. Um, so is the best way forward to start kind of thinking of tasks and putting tasks on the Trello board, or what's, what's the best workflow for everybody here? I think just putting the actionable tasks or like sentences as tasks into the Trello board, tagging people that you think would be able to help with that and seeing what happens. Ba basically being a little bit more pushy and generating that initial spark for people to engage with. So, you know, me recording this call and posting the Slack channel will also showcase other people that, hey, you know, these guys um, just you know, are trying to brainstorm ID8. There is Alex that knows a little bit more about this. Uh, I probably have some ideas. I'll, I'll jump in and, and try my best. Let, let me add one more comment though. Let, let's not post any vague tasks. Let's yeah. post yeah. tasks that somebody could literally start doing based on the information that's in the Trello card. Yeah, yeah. actionable. Cool. That's a filter. All right. And if so, we want to get more interest from, let's say there's a really well-defined NLP task, what's the best place to post and ask for people to volunteer and help out with that? That part we haven't figured out yet. I think general channel is still the best uh, place to do that. Brandon is kind of the uh, person who is trying to help with that. Uh, there is also Mark, which is kind of, you know, just a manager who tries to connect different pieces. He's trying to serve that HR uh, role right now. But I think when it comes to NLP, Brandon is, is the guy. Great. Sounds awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Good talk, everyone.